Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Welcome to the second part of the lecture of presentation of data. Title of the course is Statistics and Probability Theory with course code MTH262. In previous part, we have studied presentation of data. We will continue with the topic presentation of data. We have studied that we have three methods of presentation of data. For ungrouped data, we use textual method and stem and leaf plot. And for group data, we can make a frequency distribution of the ungrouped data to convert it into the group data. Also, we can make graph and uh, diagrams as well. And in previous lecture, we have defined that uh, how to make a frequency distribution. Uh, we have defined that what is lower class limit, what is upper class limit, what are class boundaries, what is class mass, what is frequency. And how to decide the number of classes, how to select the class width, all these things are described in previous part. Uh, in this uh, part, we will apply those methods on a numerical example. So, the, here we have an example. Make a group frequency distribution from the following data. Obviously, you can see that this data is the uh, ungrouped data relating to the weight recorded to the nearest terms of 60 apples picked out of uh, out at random from a consignment. So as you can see that this is a continuous data as these are the weight of the apples and you know that weight is continuous. So this is continuous data and you have to make the frequency distribution. So what is the first step? The very first step is you have to decide, uh, find out which is the lowest value and which is the highest value in this data. If you concentrate on this data, you will find out that lowest value would be 68 is the lowest value in the data and highest value is 204. This is the highest value in the data. So what we can do? We can find out the range uh, by subtracting the highest value in the data Highest value minus lowest value as you want to find the range of the data. So this would be 204. Minus 68. This would be the range of the data highest value minus lowest value present in the data, which would be equal to 136. So, as you want to find the class width. Class width will be equal to, or you can say it class interval as well, and we denote it with h. It will be equal to range, which is highest value minus lowest value. Divided by number 
all. Nothing. So as the range is 136, you have to decide here what would be the number of classes. As it is mentioned in previous part that minimum classes should be 5 and maximum number of classes uh, could be 20. So your number of classes should be between, uh, it should be between 5 and 20. So the class width is uh, a range over number of classes. Let's suppose we take number of classes 7. It would be 19 point 4. And when we round up it, it would be 20. It is good to have the class interval as the multiple of 5, either 5, 10, 15, 20, as this is the representation of data. So it would be easier to understand or easier to calculate the class interval. Uh, you, it will make your, uh, it would be help, helpful in constructing the class if the uh, class interval would be multiple of 5. If you, if you don't want to take the class interval multiple of 5, it will be okay. Your representation will be okay. But if you take the multiple of 5, then it will be, uh, it will reduce your efforts and it will be helpful in calculation. So class interval is each here. So now what's next? You have to make the classes. So how would you make the classes? So as uh, if you concentrate on the points which uh, we have discussed in previous part that uh, the lower class limit of the first class should be the lowest value in the data or the value I will start it from 65 as this value is lesser than the minimum value in the data so it will, will be okay that I would start the class with the number 65 so if you take the class interval 20 so this value would be 84 if we if we take uh, 65 and 84 inclusive in the data next would be 85 to 104 next would be 105 to 124 next would be 125 to 144 next would be 145 to 164 next would be 165 to 184 and the next one will be 185 to 204. So these are the classes with the class interval of uh, 20. 
Now what we will do next, we will calculate the frequency in each class for this one we will use telemark method so how to use the telemark method first of all i will go to the column column by column the first value is one by one zero six so i will go to the classes and i will concentrate each class contains one zero six this class will contain one zero six so I will apply one value mark here. Next value is one one one, and it will also come in this particular class. Next value is one hundred. It will come here. So I will mark one value here. Next will be ninety eight. Uh, ninety eight will be here. Next. Will be 148 and 148 will be here. Next will be 107. 107 will be here. Next will be 92. 92 will be here. And the next one will be 186. It would be here. Next one will be 110. And one ten will be here, and the next one will be ninety. Ninety will come here in this class. Eighty five to one zero four. Next one will be seventy six. I'm in the third column now, and seventy six will come in the first class. Next is eighty six. Eighty six will come here. Now what happens? This is one, two, three, four, four telemarks. I will mark fifth one in this way. So this would make you uh, make easier for you to calculate as this is the five set of five telemarks. So what is the next one? Next one is uh, eighty four. Eighty four will come in this class. Next one will be 78, 78 will come in this class, next one will be 107, 107 again it is 4th and 5th one will be like this, next one will be 107, 107 will be in this class and it will mark here. So in this way you will complete the telling of the data. And after that, you will make the column of the frequency and calculate all the values uh, corresponding to each class. And you would know that what is the frequency in line in each class. The next column will be frequency column. And the next one will be class mark. Which is also called midpoint of the class. And it represents by X. Class mark is 65 plus 84 divided by 2. What would be the value? It is 65 plus 84 divided by 2. It will be 74.5. And next one will be 85 plus 104 divided by 2. It will be 94. Point Five. Next one will be one fourteen point five. Next one will be one thirty four point five. 
next one will be 154.5 next one will be 174.5 and the last one will be 194.5 so this is the way to calculate the class mark and next column will be class boundary and you know that you can calculate class boundaries by x plus minus h by 2. As you know that h is 20 here and x is the class mark of each class here we have 74.5 so what will we will have 74.5 minus 20 by 2 this will be 64.5 so this is the lower class boundary of the first class. And the upper class boundary will be x plus h by 2 and x is 74.5 here. So it will be. Seventy four point five plus twenty divided by two, it will be eighty four point five. So eighty four point five is the upper class boundary of the first. Class. But if you calculate the class only in the same method as we said here, next class mark will be 94.5. So what we will do 94.5 minus 20 by 2 and 94.5 plus 20 by 2, it would be 84.5. Still 1, 0. 4.5. You can complete this table in similar way. So you will get the table like this. So these are the steady marks, and if you count that 5 plus 4, total frequency is 9. 5 plus 5, total frequency is 10. If you calculate the whole uh, column of the frequency, which you will call summation F, it would be 60 and it should be 60 because remember we have 60 apples in the data, weight of 60 apples in the data. So uh, sum of frequency should be 60. These are the midpoints of class mark, these are the class boundaries, and these are the classes which are ultimately uh, weights as the data is of the app.